everyone else seems to have already had their like post lockdown haircut and I haven't yet it's happening tomorrow and so this pineapple is a look <laughs> Hello everybody. I feel like there are so many things to address and I just I'm not going to have the time. I don't want this to be rambly and I have so many books to show you today. So I'm going to keep this very quick. You know when things begin to and you're like no thank you kind sir. No thank you. No no no. Uh, so that's what I did. I no 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 to my social medias. I like took a real pause for like a week. I like deleted Instagram and Twitter and I, to be honest, still haven't come back to Twitter. I was feeling the suck, the suck into the social media storm. And I was like, goodbye. But today I felt, I felt the urge, you know? I was sat at work and I had the, the pull and desire. And I was like, I'm gonna make a fucking video when I finish work. And here we are. <laughs> Second thing, I apologise. Can you hear? Oh, it doesn't creak when I actually do it. I apologise if there's any creaking of my chair. I am sat down because I sprained my ankle. <sighs> Ridiculous. I mean, it's mostly fine now and I can walk and everything. I was only on crutches for a little bit, but it still kind of hurt. Like, for example, standing up to film this video probably wasn't going to be the best thing. You know, it's probably going to hurt. It was already hurting a little bit. So we're sitting down for the time being. I actually quite enjoy it. Although this chair is so... Squeaky. It's fun though. <laughs> so that is that. Moving swiftly onwards. So the actual of this video is a book haul. Oh, I'm so excited. I have not, I've just noticed that there's a page, you know when a page turns backwards in a book and it's, it's in Juliet Takes a Breath and I need to rectify it immediately. Like, that is absolutely not okay. <sighs> I just realised this book needs to be in the book haul. Are there any others I've forgotten? So, for those who don't know, at the start of the year, I set myself a challenge to go on a six month book buying ban because I had so many books on my backlist and I really wanted to read them <laughs> instead of buying new books and not reading the books I already owned. <laughs> I feel like that could be a whole video in itself. Actually, I might make that. Let me know if you'd like to see that. Kind of talking about like buying books and guilt and owning books. So I went on a six month book buying ban um, and from January to June, I did very, very, very well. I only bought two books, which I'm aware does break the ban, but whatever. And then it was like mid-June, it wasn't fully six months yet, and I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm done. I'm, I'm ready to buy books again now. And I bought a lot of books. And then since that one, like, purchase, I've bought another book, and then I bought two more books in a different location. So overall, we have, like, quite a selection. And I've borrowed quite a few from my best friend Amy, um, Amy's bookshelf, um, which I'm going to really quickly show you. Um, as well. I'm not going to go into any form of depth because there's a lot. I don't want this video to be that long. I wanted it to be a kind of super quick haul. Super quick haul. Oh, also alongside us just... <sighs> Do you ever get the feeling like you're falling apart from the inside out? Alongside the foot thing, I've also had some like pains and like I went to the doctor today and the doctor was like, you have a grumbling appendix. <laughs> Which like, it's not actually that serious like you have to keep a watch on it because obviously if you get appendicitis that is you can't go to the hospital but it's not that it's just grumbling which is just like <laughs> feels like my life my life is one big grumbling appendix right now i swear to god what the fuck am i talking about okay right let's get on with the book haul i don't know where to start so i'm gonna okay i do know where to start oh my god i've forgotten a book again Another one. I'm gonna go get it. Yeah, I'm gonna go get it. I'll be right back. I think I now have all the books I've bought. I forgot I also bought another book. It's like I exploded mid-June and just like bought everything. 
Okay, so the first selection of books I bought were from Waterstones. This was peak lockdown, was it? I don't know, yeah, maybe. It was lockdown, I ordered them online, yeah. Three of the books I bought there were non-fiction, anti-racist books. And I kind of want to stress how important it is to, I don't know, I feel like this is like a whole topic and conversation in itself, but not rush, finish them, to say you've read them, that's so clout, that's performative activism. I think it's really important with books like this because they're going to be quite like in, like dense, not dense, but a lot of information to really take your time, reflect as you're going along and take in what the book is saying, like, and not just rush it just so you can say that you've read it because that's like a whole issue in itself. Don't be performative with your activism. So I will show you the three books that I have bought. It's kind of like an ongoing like selection that I want to keep reading. I read Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge back in January. Um, and I found that really, really interesting and really insightful. I learned a lot from that book, so I would really recommend that one. Um, and I will now show you the other ones that I bought. So the first one I've got is British on Race, Identity and Belonging by Afwa Hirsch. Um, this one we've actually just picked as our work book club pick. Um, so I'm really excited to discuss this with my colleagues. This one um, discusses race and identity in Britain. And I live in Britain, um, I live in England. Yeah, I'm really interested to learn more about what it is like to be a black person and to be a person of colour in England. Um, I'm going to read the back quote for you um, just really quick. Um, I think it gives it a good summary of the kind of questions this book is asking and trying to answer. You're British, your parents are British, your partner, your children and most of your friends are British, so why do people keep asking where you're from? So the second book I picked up is The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colourblindness by Michelle Alexander. Um, I picked this one up because I want to watch the 13th documentary on Netflix and I know that she's interviewed in that um, documentary um, and obviously she wrote this book. So I'm going to watch that documentary and then come back, come back here and read this book. Michelle Alexander is a lawyer and so I'm very interested to hear from her perspective um, about um, race politics in America with a particular focus on the prison system and how unjust it is. So yeah, I'm very eager, eager is not really the right word, but I'm definitely going to be reading this one um, after I've watched 13th. So yeah, that is the second one. And the third one I picked up is White Fragility, Why It's So Hard For White People To Talk About Racism by Robin D'Angelo. This one is written by a white woman. I think that's very important to note right at the beginning. Um, and I've heard lots of different things about that. And then also about how she as an author, like profiting off that, it, it like raises a lot of like heavy question marks. So I think that's important to really bear in mind. Um, I am gonna read it obviously because I have got it. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I bought this, but now I'm quite conflicted about it, but I am gonna read it and I hope it will be beneficial. I will put a few links below about what some other people have said about it. So that is the third one. This one is like on the bottom priority list of those other two books. Yeah, um, and moving onwards. Okay, so now we're moving into fiction and the first book I have is Pet by Akwaiki Mezi. Have I spoken about this one on my channel? I think I mentioned it in my Queer Blackathon vlog, but I didn't actually read it in the Queer Blackathon vlog. Yeah. I now have read this one and chef's kiss to the extreme. I love Akwaiki Mezi's writing. I'm so excited to read their other books. Um, Freshwater and then The Death of Vivek Oji has just come out. Um, but this one is wonderful um, and I would highly recommend it. Super short, super accessible to read, super diverse with lots of representations for, there's a black trans girl as the main character. She is selectively mute and so uses sign language throughout the book occasionally. Um, we've got disabled characters, we've got a casual polyamorous relationship, neurodiverse, I just, mm, you know, at the same time really like explores morality in a really metaphorical way, which was just so well done. 
um highly recommend yes 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 okay the next one i picked up in the waterstones haul was clap when you land by elizabeth acevedo um i've posted a full review of this book so i'm not going to go into it um i will link it up above Just go check that out if you want to hear a bit more but this book five stars absolutely incredible beautiful elizabeth acevedo's writing she's a seriously a new fave i love it i love her i love her prose i love her verse this is a novel in verse. A very brief summary. This is the story of Kamino and Yahara, um, who are sisters, but they've never met and they don't know the other one exists. Their dad passes away very tragically in a sudden aeroplane crash. And it is about them dealing with grief, their identity, uh, family and what it is to be sisters. There's a casual queer relationship. <laughs> I'm going to stop, uh, but check out my review if you'd like to hear more about this one. Okay, the next one I picked up is My Heart Goes Bang by Keris Stainton. This one was so cute. This is slowly becoming a wrap up. <laughs> I've like read half of them and not read the other half because it's been so long since I made a video. Um, but this one I bought because Lily from Lily Eleanor Reads included it in a like sapphic recommendations video, which I will link below. And I'm so glad that I did. It's about five friends and it's set at a British university um and it's some of them are like sure of their sexuality others are kind of coming to terms with it as i've just mentioned it's sapphic and i would really recommend it it's really fun it's not like whoa groundbreaking but it's like a really fun read and i really loved seeing like friends at a british uni like that spoke to my heart in a very specific way <sighs> we're getting through it the next one i picked up was slay by Brittany morris I loved this book. I love the inclusion of like technology and games and like, like, oh, it's just so good. It was really good. This one really explores what it is like to be a black woman at like a majority white college, but it also explores black only spaces and the importance of black only spaces. Basically, the main character creates this video game. What's it called? I can't remember now. It's called Slay. What a fucking idiot. <laughs> I can't believe I just did that. The main character creates a video game called Slay, which is a black only video game. And it is designed for black people to come in and like have a good time. And the game is like a really fun celebration of black culture. And everything is great until someone unfortunately dies whilst playing the game. In real life, they die. And so from there, things spiral and the plot happens um yeah this is a really great i really would recommend this one i'm just gonna say that for most of the books here oh not this one because i haven't read it yet <laughs> um the next one i picked up in the waterstones hall which this is the last one actually yes is the gravity of us by phil stamper i picked this one up because it was like space and gay and that's like yes yes tick tick thank you very much however then my partner ben read it and he was like meh yeah it was fine you know and then my friend amy read it and she was like yeah it's fine and that's so disappointing and now i'm not, it's like super excited to read it and now i'm just like will i like it so i hate going into books like that you know i want to have a like non tarnished view going in um but i will give it a go obviously um and i really love space in books and like like both of the main characters parents are astronauts i believe like the moms are astronauts I think I can't remember we'll see okay that's the Waterstones haul just while we're in between sections um I would love it if you subscribed if you haven't already and you enjoy my videos um we love to see it <laughs> and don't forget to give this a big thumbs up if you have enjoyed so far if you haven't stick around and then give it a thumbs up at the end um right let's move on I think I did those two next I did so the next two books I bought were from Hive which is a website I will link below if you're in the UK when you buy from Hive you can then like select the type of independent bookstore you would like to give the money to um, which is great and I love it and it's a great way to buy books and this is where I bought these two from so the first one is probably the only hardcover I will buy this year <laughs> I did that like six times. Just 
just to let you know. A Beautiful Foolish Endeavour by Hank Green. This, okay, I don't even know where to start, probably deserves its own video, but I'm gonna be super quick. This is the sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. Um, I loved An Absolutely Remarkable Thing and I reread it in prep for this book and it was a five star reread, which I was so excited by because I was really worried it wasn't gonna hold up. It held up. This one, um, it's like a 3.5 for me. Um, I won't go into it too much, but I felt um, some things were a little bit on the nose, you know? You know when it's a little bit, you could have shown not told that. That's how I felt about it. Um, especially in, like it really explores humanity really well, but some of the discussions around humanity, bit on the nose, yeah. Um, but I think it was a good sequel and I'm so excited to see what Hank comes up with next. Um, if you've read this, please let me know what you thought of it because I would love to have a discussion in the comments if you have. And the second book I got in that Hive haul, Hive haul was, here it is, <laughs> Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. I read this one like a few days ago. No, I literally didn't. When did I read it? Like a week or so ago. It was quite recent. Um, I loved this book. This book, oh boy, it explores the harmful and dangers of white feminism to um, women of colour and in a really like thorough way and also really within its time and it's set in like 2003 or something. So our main character is like learning a lot about like preferred gender pronouns and lots of other things that she hasn't heard of before. And the premise is that she really loves this book called Raging Flower, Empowering Your Pussy by Empowering Your Mind. And she basically emails the author and is like, oh, could I like come and do an internship with you? And the author's like, yeah, of course. Um, and the author is her idol. Um, and so she goes off to Portland in Oregon to do an internship with this author. Um, and from there, a lot of interesting discussions around, yeah, white feminism and like accepting yourself at the same time and, our main character, Juliet, is a lesbian and there's like some romances and some breakups and just some general like real fun coming of age like stuff. I picked this book up because Paige from In Between Pages recommended it in my LGBTQ plus video collab that I made, which I will also link up there. Yeah, one of the books that she'd recommended was this one and I picked it up and I am so very grateful for that recommendation. Uh, so that's that one. So then I went to Salisbury on a day trip to see my mum and they have an independent bookstore there called the Rocket Ship Bookshop. This is actually one of the first places I went like post lockdown, you can go places with a mask on situation. Um, and I never knew that this, I think it's new, um, but I found out that it existed and I was so excited. So I had to go there and pick up a book. And the book that I picked up is Tyler Johnson Was Here by Jay Coles. Let's firstly take a moment to really take in this cover because it is absolutely stunning. From the blurb, I can see that this book explores race in America and specifically what it means to be young and black and young and a black man in America. The beginning premise of the book is that Tyler and his brother Martin go to a party that starts out fun and ends in chaos um, with a police raid and the next day Tyler is missing um, and so that's kind of all I know about it except that it also explores grief as well um, and yeah race relations in America so yeah I'm very much looking forward to getting to this one. I've also I also know that Joel from Fictional Fates raves about this one I, in his I can't remember which video it was I'll link it below um, but yeah um, and that also sold it for me so yeah that's this one. The final two books I've bought this year um, are from Waterstones again however this time it was in person and this was just the other day when I went into town with my friend Lily. I bought two books so the first book I bought in Waterstones was The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. This is translated from the Japanese by Stephen Snyder. Stephen Snyder? Stephen Snyder. I first heard about this one in one of Emma's vlogs from Drinking By My Shelf um, and it really piqued my interest um, and so I added it and then like a, a like a numerous of things I kept seeing on Instagram and then it it tipped you know it tipped into the buy category when um, 
I saw that the Edinburgh Book Festival, they're doing lots of online events and Yoko Ogawa and her tra the translator Stephen Snyder are going to be in conversation about this book and I was like yeah I want to watch that. Um, that's in two days and I'm mid book. I don't know that I'm going to read it before that but that's still going to be really interesting. It's going to make me really want to pick it up. So yeah I'm really excited about that. This one is a dystopian and it's all about like memories and things are like memories are like getting lost I think that's like the concept that things are disappearing and then like someone is in danger her editor is in danger from the memory police. I don't really know like a solid grounding about this book but that's kind of all I know it kind of has 1984 vibes. Um, I've heard it's really weird but like also I'm really into that and I'm really excited so yeah I'm really hoping to enjoy slash be freaked out slash like this one. <laughs> the very final book I have bought this year is why did I do that? I don't know. It's How to Love a Jamaican by Alexia Arthurs. This is a story collection. Some of the stories are set in Jamaica and then some are set in America and it really focuses on Jamaican culture and um, like Jamaican immigrants and then in turn like their family back home in Jamaica and kind of explores small knit communities and then bigger communities identity just a lot of things and I'm really really excited to dive into this I don't read a lot of short story collections but like this one has been on my radar for so long I can't remember who from originally but just so many people and I've seen it around a lot and I'm very excited to finally dive in and give it a go and that is it I was gonna show you what books I've borrowed from my friend Amy but I think I think that's gonna have to wait <laughs> because I think this video is probably already too long. Um, this is really fun to like get back into the chatting about books zone. I mean I've been around on Instagram so if you don't follow me on Instagram you can go and do that it's just at travels and fiction. Um, I'm actually about to do a giveaway when I hit 2,000 followers so yeah a lot a lot of great books that I'm really excited to read. I think I'm now gonna pull back not like strictly pause buying books but I'm gonna kind of pause and because I'm so excited for all of these ones that I don't feel like a burning need to buy more because so many of these ones I'm like desperate to read uh, which is a great feeling um hopefully this was just I'm just gonna oh, sit like this this is just kind of like a chatty casual vibe video um showing you the books I've bought this year don't forget to check in my description box where I'll be leaving all the links I've mentioned in this video alongside some other links about things that are happening around the world at the moment that might need your attention um, or things you might not know about. So go and have a look down there and um, until next time, see you in the next one. Bye! Ooh.